experts interact with each other primarily via the internet. So what she said is absolutely correct. So an online community is where people come together and they network with each other, but they use the internet, okay? So they don't actually see each other in person, face to face, okay? So who knows any examples of an online community? Facebook. Okay, Facebook is one of them. Instagram. Yes. YouTube. WhatsApp. WhatsApp, yes. Sweetsap. No, the internet is not an online. Well, I mean, somewhat, but not really. Okay. I am. Huh? I am. Okay. So you guys are all um, talking about social networks that are also online communities, but there are also lots and lots and lots of other types of online communities. Okay. So for many people, online communities may feel like home, consisting of a family of invisible friends. So let's talk a little bit about what an online community is. Those who wish to be part of an online community usually have to become a member by a specific site. So the same way that you have to sign up for Facebook, you have to sign up for any other online community. And usually you need an email address to do that so that they can identify you and that they can send you messages and updates, okay? And an online community can also act as an information system where members can post, comment and discuss and give advice and collaborate. So all the online communities that you guys have mentioned are either instant messaging platforms or um, social networks. However, there are other online communities. So for example, there are online communities for students, then there are online communities for mothers, and on those kind of communities they exchange things that are relevant to them. So for example, for students, um, online communities might discuss exam preparation. Okay. So when I was in school, we used to have an online community in my university. And um, in the online community in our university, everybody that attended that same course, regardless of the year that they were in, was inside that online community. And you were allowed to post questions and give advice on how to solve homework. However, you were not allowed to actually give the answer to the homework. So you can give a hint on how to solve the problem, but you're not allowed to actually solve the problem for the person. And that was a very, very good online community for us as students because it actually helped us exchange ideas, you know, and figure out how to do certain things that were really, really hard. And the people who were in a higher class than us actually helped us as well on, um, you know, doing that because they would log in and they've already solved these problems a year before us. So they know the answers, but they also know the things that they struggled with. So they help us and give answers. And in that online community, we used to discuss and comment and, you know, post different things. Now, how did we make sure that nobody gave the answer, right? So our professors were inside the online community as well. And they would see who posts what. So if you post an answer, you definitely will get a bad mark okay, in your next assignment because you've already you know, spoiled it for everybody and nobody is learning anymore. And the core of that online community was for people to learn and not for people to just get the answer and copy and submit it because then you're not learning anything. Okay? So commonly people communicate through social networking sites, chat rooms, forums, email lists, and discussion boards. So these are all different types of online communities, okay? So you guys have already mentioned um, social networking sites and chat rooms. However, we've not talked about forums, email lists, and discussion boards. So there are some email lists as well that you can subscribe to, and you can um, get information from these email lists and you can send information to the email list to share with the community that is um, within that um, email list. 
And the forum is basically what I just explained, what we had in our school. An online community where we could just exchange information. So it was not social. We didn't post pictures of our pets or of our friends or anything like that. It was just about homework. It was just about the course that we were taking. Um, it was just to get information, to recommend books that we had read that were helping us to do better in school and things like that. Okay, people may also join online communities through video games, blogs, and virtual worlds. Who knows anything about virtual worlds? Okay, there's someone there at the back. A virtual world is where people from around the world come together using the internet to like communicate like using for example like sims or like a virtual game they can come together and communicate. Does everybody here know sims? Yes. Everybody? Yes. Okay. So that's a very good example of a virtual world, okay? So in the virtual world, you actually create a character, and you are that character in that particular world, and you interact with other characters that other people have created within the virtual world. And you basically live a life as that character in that virtual world, okay? So that's um, one part of it, so that's video gaming, right? So there are other games where if you have an internet connection, for example, on your PlayStation, you can play with people from all over the world. You can form teams and you can play against other teams. So there are a lot of games like that nowadays. And that, those types of things also create online communities because you might be playing with a child that is somewhere in America or somewhere in China or somewhere in Europe. And you know, you're here in Nigeria, in Africa, and they're somewhere else in the world, but you're all playing together. And without the internet, that would not be possible. Without the virtual reality, that would not be possible. So online communities go beyond, you know, social networks. They go beyond forums. They go beyond email lists. So why are online communities important to the development of young people? So young people, you're growing up in a world that is connected. And this world is completely different from the world that I grew up in. And this is something that you know is very, very important for parents to actually understand as well. Because the way that you guys are growing up and the things that are important to you guys are completely different to the things that were important to your parents. And sometimes they might not understand why certain things are, are important for you to learn or why spending time on Facebook actually helps you with you know, creating your social skills that you need in this digital age. So young people are learning basic social and technical skills as they need to fully participate in the contemporary society. So what does that mean? It means that by being online and being part of online communities, you guys are actually learning how to engage in this new world and engage in ways that your parents never had to engage in because when your parents were growing up, there were night old lines. If you wanted to visit somebody, you just walk to their house, you ring the bell, and if they're not there, you go back home. That was how it was. If you have a phone line, you're very lucky and you can maybe phone some of your friends. Sometimes the line does not work. Sometimes you hear other people talking in the line. You guys think that you know you guys are not doing it. Your reality is completely different because you can be in your room and you can be on your phone chatting on WhatsApp to five of your friends at the same time. And you feel a very close bond to these friends, and you feel like you've interacted with them, but you haven't actually really interacted. But this is where the world is going to. And this is what the world is morphing into, and it's becoming more and more. It's like that with work. When you guys start working and go into the workforce, you'll see that you have to interact with people who are not in the same office with you. They might be in other parts of the world, they might be in other parts of your country or your state. And 
technology makes it possible for you to work with these people seamlessly without being in the same room. You guys could actually, this camp for example, if it was a virtual camp, you guys could all be in your individual homes as long as you have a laptop and internet and you would still be seeing me talking. Okay? And I would still be able to ask questions if you have a video connection and then you would be able to respond. And it would be the exact same setting that we have here, but it would all be online. Then the social world that youth are negotiating have new kinds of dynamics, as online socializing is permanent, publicly involved, and it manages elaborate networks of friends and acquaintances, and it's always on. So you guys might be getting messages from your friends late at night, early in the morning, in the afternoon, that is something that, that's what it means. It's always on. It doesn't sleep. Social networks don't sleep. If you go on Facebook in the evening, you see something different than if you go again in the morning. You have loads and loads of friends. You have acquaintances that you don't really know. Yet you know what's happening in their lives. You know when maybe they graduate from secondary school. You know when they're going to university. You know when they have a new friend, when it's their birthday, because they post these things and they celebrate these things and you celebrate with them, right? So this is what the online communities are doing. The internet provides new kinds of public spaces for you to interact and receive feedback from one another. So when you, for example, do a post on Facebook and say, oh, I'm at the W10 Girls ICT Summer Camp, you have different reactions. Some people will say, oh wow, you didn't tell me about it. Why did you go alone? Other people will say, oh well done, you know, tell me all about what you've learned. And then you can feedback and you can tell them, oh I learned about leadership, I learned about programming, I learned about this, I learned about that. All the things that you guys were saying this morning when I was sitting there at the back and listening are things that you share in your online community with your friends so that other people can learn as well. So an online community has something very, very unique and very special. The fact that there are so many people in the online community allows you to actually teach many, many people. So you might feel that you can't teach anything. However, there are so many girls that you know that didn't come to this camp, right? The things that you learn in this camp, you don't learn in normal school usually, right? Okay. So do you think that if you share some of the knowledge that you've learned in this camp with some of your friends that they will be excited and they will be very, very happy that they can learn through you, right? Okay, so online communities do that as well. Young people respect each other's authority online and are motivated to learn from each other more than from adults. Okay, so it's in an online community, if you're talking to somebody who is your peer and that person knows that, okay, you're very good at math and you're explaining a math problem, they will listen to you, right? If the teacher is walking up and down here and shouting and explaining the math problem, will they listen to the teacher? Exactly, they will not listen to the teacher. Okay, so that's the difference. And that's where you guys have a lot of power that you need to also harness and you need to, you know, take that power and actually use it. Okay, so most youth use the internet socially, but others for learning, of other learning opportunities exist. As I said, there are different types of communities. So there are also communities that are focused on learning. And those online communities are the communities that I hope that you will explore beyond your social network. You can connect with people at different locations and different ages who share their interests, making it possible to pursue interests that might not be popular or valued with their local peer group. So for example, if you like playing video games and none of your friends like playing video games, there are lots of other kids online that like playing that same video game that you have. And you can go online and find these kids and chat with them. And then it will feel like you actually have friends that share your interests. These friends are not friends that you know you see on a day-to-day -day basis or that you hang out with, but they are friends that are online and that are, you know, the things that you do with them are just a little bit different. 
Geek out learning opportunities are abundant. Subjects like astronomy, creative writing, and foreign languages are all over the internet. So the internet also allows you to learn things that you don't normally learn in school. So you guys are using Scratch, right? Yes. Okay, so you know there's a Scratch website. Are you using the website to learn? Yes. yes. Okay. So, I mean, if that website didn't exist, how do you think you'll learn programming? It will be very hard, right? Okay. Even after this camp, you guys can still go on the Scratch website and learn programming, right? Yes. Okay. You know, so these are the things, these are the opportunities that online communities actually create for you. So Scratch is also some type of online community because people from all over the world come there to learn how to code. Um, and they have different types of, you know, levels that you can go through so that you can go from beginner to intermediate to expert. Um, and once you finish learning how to code with Scratch, learning any other um, programming language will be very, very easy. Okay, so it's these kind of opportunities that are very, very um, amazing in this day and age. Because you don't need to go far away to learn. You can learn from wherever you are as long as you're connected. Online communities also allow you to become content creators, managers, and distributors. How many of you have a blog? A blog. How many of you have a blog? Nobody has a blog? Do you guys know what a blog is? Yes. Okay, I want somebody to give me the definition of a blog, please. Okay, there's someone back there. And like what, what do you post on your blog? Like you can post stuff that is happening. Okay. So is there a reason why none of you have a blog? I want to know some reason. Let me have like three or four reasons. We don't know how to create one. Even if you say you're going to use the internet to create one, it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard because sometimes the instructions on the internet are not very specific. So you actually need someone to teach you how to create one. Okay. Anyone else? Why don't you have enough time? You're in secondary school, right? <laughs> okay, so you're preparing for your exam. Okay. One more reason why none of you have a blog. Nobody wants to give me a reason why you don't have a blog. I'd like to hear one more reason, please. Because we don't have a personal system yet, laptop. Okay, do you have a phone? A smartphone? Okay, you can blog with a smartphone. You don't need a personal system to blog. Sorry? What's Indiana using Android for? You're not using Android for what? Indiana using Android for. An Android phone. What kind of smartphone do you have? Huh? You have an iPhone. I tell, but it's a smartphone. You can browse with it. Yeah, then you can create a blog. You don't need an Android phone to create a blog. Okay, I'm going to tell Mrs. Aura that you guys should learn how to create a blog. I'm sure it's also part of this half, but if it's not, I'm going to tell her that it's important for you guys to learn how to create a blog. Okay, so with a blog, you guys can share the things that you're interested in, right? So there are some blogs that are focused entirely on fashion. If you are a fashion lover, you would go on a fashion blog and follow the latest fashion trends. And fashion bloggers would post everything and anything that has to do with fashion. There are blogs that are focused on um, 
dogs, for example. So if you like dogs, you can go on a blog that's focused on dogs and you can learn 